this is amazing. Is everybody listening to this? We're not supposed to be physically infatuated with artists regardless of gender. It's more like, so gross to say, but... This is serious. Okay. Do you hate men? Sell, sell, sell. The musicians need money. You're listening to the Pascal's briefs. Just because it's short doesn't mean it can't be fun. How's it guys? Welcome back to the Bass Cast. My name is Bass Beer and this is my cast. Today with me I have got... Wait, before I say that, I need to say something first. It's been a bit. Been gone for about two months. Restarted this now with this Bass Cast brief. But just so you know, I just want to give a massive shout out first to an unnamed supporter who asked that I do not, you know, make a big deal out of it. But just thank you so much. You are the first sponsor of the Bass Cast. And if, if it weren't for you, you know... Uh, this thing would get really expensive. If you too would like to be part of it, fund your business, do something creative, hey, talk to me. Let's do marketing things for you. Anyway, I've got with me Jolene. I've got your surname for a second, East. <laughs> <laughs> with me, I've got Jolene East. And uh, you might remember a while ago, I had a chat with Steve East. See the surname connection. Hello, Jolene. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Welcome. Lekker, lekker om te weer. Yeah. Are we doing this thing in Afrikaans or English? Oh, we can do both, everyone. Cheers. Why not? Cheers. Happy, happy hot chocolate. English because algorithms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> algorithms. Listen, I had your hubby on this uh, chat a while ago, but now yes. I've got you. Sure. So obviously I had to start somewhere and then scale up. Yeah. I mean, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> I'm having a lucky day and I'm on the way to a gig after this and it's lucky to be chatting with you. Nice. Now, I mean, when I met you, you were not the musician in the situation. You started playing ukulele accidentally, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of like just it happened and then next moment you joined your musician husband as a performer, entertainer, on stage, personality, solo, vocalist, singer. Who are you and what do you do, just in case no one knows? Well, I used to be in a band called The Mitten Fits um, about 11 years ago. And we used to do a lot of events in the East Rand, in Benoni side, because we're from Benoni, me and my hubby. And um, yeah, we started out trying to get the pubs there going. And we um, had a friend that had a little bit of trouble with the... And then we started a band together to get some money to get this guy help. Okay. And then... Was that um, how the mid and fit started? That's how the mid and fit oh, started. Yeah, we were a band doing a once-off gig and we were going to get some cash in to help the family, take care of this music friend. And then, yeah, we started doing gigs and we started doing mid and fist fests. And I think we did like six fests, mid and fests, where we just had like other bands. Like, I think in that time, Straight Jackal just started. And they played one of their first gigs with us at a Mitz and Fitz gig at Crossroads in Boxburg, which used to be a strip club, which is now a pool club. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> with a lot of strips on Thursdays. And the same anyway. amount of tits every night. Story. Same amount of mittens, yeah. <laughs> and now, I mean, you're performing as Jolling by yourself. Yeah, Jolling was my own pro uh, my own project that, that came from Mitz and Fitz because people went overseas and people went overseas. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, one that stuck around was obviously your husband, and you've got the Honeymooners. Yeah, so I wanted to play, um, I wanted to, I was releasing my solo drawing stuff, and I wanted to play Strap, so when I submitted, Jessica Wirtz said, why don't you just let Steve play with you? And I was like, oh, I don't want to play with my husband, that's weird. Like, you, I don't you want to be in a band You definitely need to play with your husband, <laughs> that's the key to a healthy uh, marriage. I mean, you know, we are married for quite a long time now, so that's all right, I think. <laughs> But um, yeah, then she said, just call yourself the Adi Muniz. And then we started drawing together as the Adi Muniz. And that was, I think, six or seven years ago. And how's it going? Good, good, good. We enjoy it. I mean, there's something magical to just be doing music for, you, for life, like every day, you know. Um, not having to do debtors and creditors and <laughs> go see the HR ladies, smell like booze. <laughs> You, like, you are I don't your want to HR do that. Yeah, I'm my own HR lady, so I must keep cop. I can cop with whatever, you know. And um, yeah, so that's that's what we do now. We do lots of designs. We've got some branding clients, and then um, we're just on the road and we're playing gigs. And you do tour a lot. I we mean, do tour a lot. Yeah. That's a, that, that's actually one thing that I want to stand still at is the dynamic of a husband and wife performing together. And especially since what we do want to chat about today is Galpalooza. Yes. Um, but we'll get there. It's a 
fully female show situation, yeah. and apparently you hate men. Air quotes apparently. in this. We'll get there. We'll get to why Jolene, air quotes, hates men. But it's something fascinating to me to sit and talk to someone that's obviously doing something work-wise, which mm. your music is, yeah. at such a full-time pace and basis, but with your full-time partner, your husband. Yeah. I had a chat with uh, um, uh, uh Ruth and Annie the other day, mm. and to see the dynamic between Franco oh, and Floyd. Oh, there's a lack of one. Go watch that one, guys. Absolutely, there's a card <laughs> link here somewhere. There's a link. Um, but how's the dynamic for you two? Do you find it difficult to switch off the husband and wife role and then go into the collaborative musician role? Is it husband and wife on stage? How, how, how do you put that together and make it work? I think that it's not really a husband and wife role or a band role. It's more like so gross to say, but like we're best friends. We we work together at Look and Listen. He was the manager, I was admin manager. He started being operate like like a not operations manager, but the training facility was Look and Listen East Strand. So every time a branch opened, all the staff would come there and Steve would train the manager and all the staff. I would train the admin lady and put all those procedures. And then at one point I was in Pretoria doing three look and lessons, like half day there, half day there, half day there, half day there, just on the road. And you need like, more, day, more half days than a day yeah, allows. Sell, 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 the musicians need money. <laughs> so I think I've got that chuspa in me and I think he's got that chuspa in him. So it's easy to, for us to work together because we already have that background. And then for us to like be a part of it is even nicer. It's even more magical, you know. So yeah, it gets tough. I mean, if in, if you were on the road with anyone else, it would be tough. But it's I think it's easier to be on the road with the, someone you love that also has the same values and the same ethics as you, and that wants to do something that's like a amal. And it does make it cheaper to tour because now the you know client only needs to book one room for accommodation. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you know, and a couch in case. Oh yeah, Steve doesn't drink anymore. He doesn't have to sleep on the couch. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but I mean, look, you are making up for him, so <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. I can't even remember the days where I try to keep up. I'm like, how did I do that? How did I mm. do a bottle of tequila at night? That's yeah, and mad. then you realize you did that three or four times a week. It becomes a bit of a situation. Yeah, as soon as you thought, you're like, what's going on? <laughs> can't have this anymore, bruh. <laughs> so you're, you, you guys seem to have a really nice dynamic, obviously, as the husband-wife duo, the business partners, the yeah. friends on stage. That's really beautiful, just yeah. saying. I think more bands can do with that uh, to remember that they are friends. Yeah. And if they aren't, seriously, you're not the Eagles. Break up and go do something else. Yeah. Um, how do you manage to keep yourself then, your personal identity, as not only an individual musician, but as, let's be honest, it is a different ballgame to be a female musician in the industry versus... Yeah just another dude singing pubs. We've been doing it for years. I think yeah. for years, in my opinion, it's been a, not a segregation, but almost a separation of roles when it comes to seeing what a woman brings to the industry versus what a man brings to the industry. Yeah. Although in the last, I would say, five to ten years, that has literally been merging. You know, you don't so often get that anymore in my perspective that, mm. oh, you're a woman, you cannot possibly entertain a pub. You need to go and sing at a family-friendly restaurant just for the kids, you know. Yeah. How would you say your experience is as a woman then in this industry? Well, I'd say <laughs> I wish I could carry speakers. That's what I'd say. <laughs> I wish I could carry speakers, but um, I can't. So this is what happens. You know, you have to go out there. You have to get your things done. And um, so there's a lot of men in the industry that don't play pubs. Mm. You know, a lot of men that that are married, that have kids, and they're like, I just can't do pubs anymore. Like, we, I'd rather do something that's more, um, not not pubby, but more like, it means a little bit more if you're at a restaurant and some and the whole family is enjoying your, your music. Like, it has a little bit more, more of a beautifulness to it, more of a shine, you know, mm. whereas if you're at a pub and you're just doing, I don't know, like, like, the classic Kylie Minogue song or something like that and you're just at a pub and you're just alone and that's not, I don't know if that is the experience I'm after. Mm. So I, I feel like if you're a woman, you need to create this experience that you you deserve, that your music deserves and that you're after so that you can shine from yourself. Like, I mean, it's one thing writing 
it's one thing writing your songs and have, putting your art there, but it's an it's another thing actually being the person who wrote those songs. So getting those two to balance in the industry is quite tough because people always want to put you in a category. They always want to box you and then be like, oh, she's a pop singer, she's a this singer, she's a that singer. But we, that doesn't even matter, you know. You think they box you as a female singer as well? Or do they start yeah, approaching they'll, you? They'll definitely do it with women, but they do it with men as well. You know, mm. I think with from, from the women's perspective, I think being, um, feeling safe on stage, feeling safe at any venue, regardless if it's a bar or a restaurant, that's for me lacquer. Because you want to feel like you can give your song that you're singing its right... Um, you have to do it justice on the day. So if you're singing about women things like being raped, yeah. being mishandled, being divorced, being Various. groped, peers, <laughs> you know, you want to get those songs through, but you want the people to understand where you're coming from. You don't want the people to go, yeah, well, that's not weird. <laughs> like that's that's not what you're going for. Mm -hmm. So to give your song justice, you need to be able to be yourself. You need to be mm -hmm. up on stage. You need to be happy about what you're doing. You need to put out your advertising. You need to have your flyers. You need to do your interviews. You need to play the game, you know, as hard as the men, if not harder, you know, because how else? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, else? I've got a theory, and please, I, I, I can't possibly say that I'm correct because okay. I'm not a woman in this. Let's go. But uh, do you think that's one of the reasons why sometimes it's more difficult for a lady to get a serious booking? And by serious, I mean... You're not getting booked just because you flash your tits. I mean, fucking use your wiles, do what you can. Yeah. If you're pretty, use it. You know, men yeah. use their muscles to pick up the speakers. It's the positives True. for all. True. But set that aside, do you think that women more often than not feel like they've got a message or an agenda with their songs that they want the audience to get, whereas men might just go and you know sing the song and don't care if the audience gets it? How would you position yourself like that? Do you care that people get the message that you're putting out about the womanly things, about the rape, the divorce, the, the um, you know, abuse? Yeah, I think you try and get your message across as much as you can and you try and do it justice, as I said. But, um, you know, singing about a cowboy burning his house down but it means as much to men as to women. Uh, but to women, we feel like we, we don't have that kind of presence in a room where if you say something, it's going to be taken... Seriously, it's like, okay. oh, it's so insane. No, it's, and, and patronizing, I can't, uh, can't. So that's that's also a thing, like trying to get away from just being patronized uh, about your art. And, so is this oh, where you came on, <laughs> <laughs> Is this where you came to the idea and to the conclusion that you need to have an event like Galpalooza to showcase women doing their things without, you know, being overly man haty Yeah, I think Galpalooza, I put together... Women that I've worked with in the industry, women that I've seen on, on the road, women that I've seen in festivals, women that have actually touched me, my heart, when I like listen to their songs. I'm like, this is amazing. Is everybody listening to this? You know? <laughs> and then I'm like, that girl needs a gap, man. That girl needs a gap. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do something. And then it's just getting together. And it's also lacquer because if, if I'm touring and one of the other girls are touring and we're both in Durban and there's a gig, then we'll draw it together. You know, you can be like, hey, do you want to come and draw a few songs with me or like play a set before me? Do you want to slot or something? And then you create a culture of music, which is now very much lost. It can't just be one kind of culture. This is South Africa. <laughs> you know, we diversity. need to get in diversity always, always. And you make the circle bigger. You need to... Just make everything bigger. People will come. That's that's how it works. Now, People will be there. <laughs> when telling me about Galpalooza and having this all female lineup and basically building a supporter base for each other, yeah. you did mention to me that you get a lot well, not a lot, you do get hate mail, you get people asking, Why do you hate men? Yeah. Now, Jolene, let me ask you straight. Yeah. This is serious. Okay. Do you hate men? No. Well, there you've got it. Okay. Jolene does not hate men. Thank you for listening to this. Okay, wait. Let's go on to that. Uh, <laughs> That's why, a wrap, everybody. <laughs> what, what do you mean when you say that people send you those messages and why do you think they send it? What's the context? I think in the in South Africa, in our... How do I say it? My English is all. I'll translate for you. <laughs> My 
in in our culture as South Africans, you are allowed to go up and go, yes, see, I'm like real, you're sexy, that me, I like so sexy, don't I'm wearing all that. That's okay, that's acceptable. But if a man does that, and does that to a woman, then it's a problem. Yeah, then it's like, you know, so it's such an old way of thinking about the industry, and it's such an old way of actually just humaning, you know, that that that's that's something that's a huge problem because now women don't get supported as much because when you get home, your girlfriend can know, tune. You know, and, and that's, that's something that's always going to probably be a problem, but if we could just see it. So just what's the solution? It. Would you then like to have more men say, yes, Jolene, like a tito while you're on stage? Or would you like to have less women say, Andre Krill, I love your hair, I want you to know, put in my legs? I know I've got like a tito, you know, I live with him all the time. <laughs> I don't use them in my advantage, okay? <laughs> I want my music to speak for itself. But I think if we could be a little bit more respectful, mm. I don't think that's too much to ask. Um, you know, when I go, when I see a show and someone's literally just played the best show I've ever seen, I'll go to them. Of course, I'm going to be fangirling a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Maybe a bit much. But I just want to say, like, you touched me. Your music touched mm. me. Your music is now forever mm. in my soul. It's part of my DNA. Every time we lose a musician, I feel that loss in every every little molecule in my body it's mm. part of my dna that music is part of me you know so when i'm singing now when losing someone i can connect into that feeling that i had felt when mm. i saw that person live and now to me it's making me be bigger it's making me be be more so and that's for the respect that i had for those musicians mm. it wasn't for the hotness, because everyone's hot in any way, yeah. you know? Everyone's hot in any way. In There's their a, own way. In their own way, everyone is beautiful. Have you seen my husband? He's very beardy. Yeah. Some girls don't like beardy. So know? what's the message then? Are we trying to separate the idea that we're not supposed to be physically infatuated with artists regardless of gender and just focus on the music? Or do you think there is still a space for appreciating the beauty of the person in your perspective while saying, look, Yes, the Axel Furler rocks, but wow, their music is good too. Yeah. Where's the balance then? I think the two don't really have to do with each other because if, if you're an artist, you're an artist. Nobody, I mean, Van Gogh wasn't sexy. I wouldn't Madden know. Six, didn't even have an ear. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if people can just appreciate art for what it is. If you imagine Leonardo da Vinci painting the church's roof and someone going, you're going with a fat guy. Yeah. Fat white guy. Is that what you're doing? Like, he never had something like that. Yeah. We do in our time. So it's actually just asking for that little bit of respect, just to listen a little bit mm. to what's happening in this person's art that they're sharing. I think if we could create something that's a healthy kind of mm. scene, okay, would be so nice because then everyone could work together and we can create a nice culture in South Africa and we can build the tourism mm. and our friends in England can come back. Yes. Come back. <laughs> well, listen, I think that setting up something like Galpalooza to show that, look, it's not a man-hating thing. It is a showcase of female talent. It is yeah. a safe space creation. I would like to make a call. If you know, you know about a venue that actually respects women for the art they bring to the stage and not just for the tits, Please, let Jolene know. They'll organize female-fronted events at your venue. Yeah, send I mean. me links, send me links. <laughs> now, listen, Jolene, I thank you so much. Just a quick punt again. You have got a pre-party for Galpalooza happening at Railways. Yeah. Uh, Railways, where we are filming this uh, chat now and a couple of other chats. And with I just printed the posters. Look at Bring us poster. a poster. Bring us a poster. So, yeah, they're doing Galpalooza pre-party at Railways in Centurion. And then on the... Jolene, what's the date for the thing? The 4th of August. 4th of August. It's yeah. the weekend before Galpalooza. We. There we go. Go check you it out. You can check it in the bathroom. Steve just gone to buy plastic. Come oh, to... Yeah. He's also having a gig. But yeah, you can check that. And I'm not talking about that one. It's all my mind. Come to Railways to the bathroom. Make sure you drink enough so that you can go to the PP place. Go and check out the posters and you will know where to go for the 4th of August. And then Galpalooza. 
Yes, Galpaliza tickets are online. We've got a website. You can chop to our website for tickets. You can jump to our ticket link. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. The links will be in the, in the, the podcast description. The links will be in the podcast. Thank you so much yeah. for putting the links in the podcast and caring about us girls because we need some sweet girls on stage. Look, I love women for a couple of reasons. Obviously for the art and the, and the softness and the niceness they bring to music, but also because I can really not masturbate more in my life. <laughs> You know, we need women in this world. We really do. Look, that's a man job, that. Eh? <laughs> that's a man job. Listen, I really look forward to seeing you guys at Klitzgras. I Danke. think it's the 9th, right? It's the 9th and the on 10th Women's of Day. August on National Women's Day. It's a two-day festival. And there's going to be meditation. There's going to be yoga. There's going to be food, a market. We're doing a hot space market with Megs and Beanie. They are the sweetest. And they're running a market. And we're doing music, and we've got Brandon doing sound pass, and Franco Yamnik is going to be our stage manager. So just to show, it's yeah. not just women, you know, just not just cute. women. We know women know we need men. <laughs> I just want to officially say before you at me that masturbation joke was a joke. I know women are good for more than just that. We can make tea. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Listen, Jolene, thanks so much for popping into a boss class yes. brief. Really appreciate it. Best of luck with the events coming up, and I look forward to many, many more Galpaloozas. Ach, danke. There you have it, guys. And uh, yeah, just a final shout out again. If you would like to be a supporter of the Boss Class, get in touch. Very much like Audio Torch does by sponsoring me with their camera gear. So thank you very much, Audio Torch. There's a logo. Look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, Railways, thanks for filming. Oh, yeah. Have a good one. Yeah. Shout out to Lisa. Love you, babes. See you in it. <laughs> Niceness.